Hey guys, in this section, we will be creating a tiny school management system just so that we can concretize some of the PHP concepts that we would have been learning up until this point. Just to get you up to speed, our tool set will include Visual Studio Code for our, well, development purposes. We'll also be using PHP My Admin for our database development and sometimes maybe MySQL Workbench. Of course, we know that with PHP development, we need our ZAMP server to be up and running with Apache and MySQL services enabled. I'll be using Bootstrap 4 for all our interface uh, interactions as well as jQuery. And once again, our underlying language for development will be a combination of HTML and PHP. So in this video, I want us to use the opportunity to set up our file and folder structure. It's always good to have a structure and a structure helps us to know where everything is and keep everything organized. So the first thing I'm going to do, having opened Visual Studio Code to nothing, is click file, go ahead and open a folder and then navigate to my HD docs folder inside of XAMPP. So I'll just go right back up to my computer so that we can all see where to go. So we go to this PC, go to our C drive, find the XAMPP folder and then find HD docs. So every PHP application must exist inside of HD docs for the server to be able to manipulate it. And then I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call this one SMS, short for student management system or school management system. Having created that folder, I'm now going to just select folder and let Visual Studio Code refresh itself to the context of that folder. Now, everything we do from this point will be relative to the folder. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an index.php file. Remember that the first file in your web application must always be index.php. I'm just going to go ahead and create other generic files that you, most applications or websites have, which will be contact.php and about.php. So that's our contact us and about us page. Uh, but our index page will always be our landing page, right? Now, in terms of the folders, so this icon here, create a new file. I can use this icon to create a new folder. And the first folder I'm going to create is one for my includes files, another one for, oh, and sorry. So if you have a folder selected and you click new file or new folder, it will automatically create it inside that folder. So I just want to make sure I'm not selecting that folder when I'm clicking new folder and you'll see that the, the hierarchy is different from it was initially. So I'm just creating a new folder at the root and that one is going to be DB. All right, so we're looking good so far. Now I'm going to introduce some folders that will actually be storing files uh, relative to the, well, the context of the application. So in, in more um, sensible terms, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call that one students because when a student is interacting with our system, we want them to see a certain set of pages, right? So I'm going to create a subfolder for student navigation, another subfolder, and there I made that mistake again, almost creating that folder inside of that inside of the existing folder. So I'm clicking out, and then I'm going to try it again, and then I'm going to create a lecturers folder, and then last but my no means least, I'm going to create an admin folder. So these folders are really so that when an admin logs in they will see a certain set of pages. When a student logs in, we would navigate them to see a certain set of pages and the same for the lecturers, all right? And then inside of each of these folders, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call that file index.php. So remember index.php is always the first file that will get rendered, which means that when we navigate to our application and I say slash students, it will automatically just render the index.php page as the first page. All right. So I'm going to give students its own index page, lecturers its own index.php page, and admin its own index.php page. All right. We're not going to do much more with those. That's really just setting up the basic files and folder structure. I am going to, however, use this time to set up our template files. So we have the includes folder, which is going to store some 
general files that instead of rewriting this code over and over, we're just going to write the code one time and place it inside a file that is going to be inside this includes folder. And then we can just reference those files when we need them. So the first one that I'm going to do is the header dot php. The next one I'm going to do is footer dot php. Now the header and footer files will be included at the top and bottom of every page and they will contain the basic HTML template code that is needed on every page as well as all of the CSS and jQuery uh, or J JavaScript references that will be needed by any page. So at this point, I'm going to begin my inclusion of Bootstrap into our website by going to get bootstrap.com where I am going to just look at a sample. So there are different ways to include Bootstrap. We can, you can use a package manager and install it. You can reference the files via links to the remote hosting of the file called a CDN, Content Delivery Network. And you can also download the files manually and integrate them into your pro project. So I'm going to choose a path of least resistance and just reference them via the CDN links. And I'm going to just look at one of their samples and then tweak it to my purpose. So the first thing they give us is a get started page where they explain that all you need to do is just copy this line into the header part of your page or copy these JS files into your the bottom part of your body tag in your HTML page. A little further down, they actually give you a starter template where they tell you or they show you what this file would look like having done the previously mentioned steps. So I'm just going to take this template and I'm just going to copy, go back to my project. So I'm just going to bring up my project and let me start off with my index page. So remember that index.php is our landing page. So I'm just going to paste that there. And then just as a status check, we're just going to try and browse to our index page just to make sure that what we're doing so far is working. So I'll just go back to my browser. I'll open a new tab and then I'll go to local host and local host renders whatever is inside of HD docs. So remember to get to the project that we are about to build, we need to go directly to SMS and there I was hello world being rendered. And that's because the code from the template gives us hello world. Now what I'm going to do is start ripping this uh, text apart and splitting it into the header and footer. So I'm just going to close all of these open tabs and make sure I only have the files that I need for work. So I have header and I have footer.php and I have index.php. So the code that I would want to repeat across every single page because if you're familiar with HTML, which you should be if you're doing this course, you know that every HTML page needs to look something like this, right? We need the doc type, we need uh, some directives at the top, we have our head tag, and then we have our body tag, which then contains whatever content it is that we want on the page. And then it must close with the body tag and the HTML tag, right? So. What we're going to do is split this file across these two files so that every time we include them, we will make sure that we have the standard HTML code at all times. So for the header, which means everything that will come before the content we want on the page, I'm just going to take from the opening body tag straight up to doc type, or maybe I should say from the doc type straight down to the body tag since you read from top to bottom. And I'm going to cut this. I'll go over to header.php and paste it. All right, and then I'm going to save and I have auto save enabled in my Visual Studio Code. If you need to enable that, you can go to file and click auto save. All right, so I have that uh, include, well, I butchered the file, sorry, I split the file in two, I don't like using the word butchered, and I put the top part of any HTML page inside of the header. Then I'm going to take everything below what the content would be, 
and put that in footer. So I'm going to take all of this, cut, bring it over to footer.php and paste. Now, if we look back at our page having done all of that, if I refresh, you'll notice that the font itself will change. And that's because everything is defaulting to what an HTML page or what your browser's default font would be. Notice it's not as you know sleek as it looked just now. And if we right click and view page source, we see that literally only that H1 is being rendered. There's no preceding and, and uh, proceeding HTML code around it. That's because, well, we just took it out and split it up. So our index page literally only has empty space, hello world, empty space. So what we need to do now is we're going to reference the files header and footer. So to reference a file using PHP, what we would do is say, open our PHP tag. So in order to write PHP code, we have to open our PHP tag. And then I'm going to say include. So you have two ways to reference a file. You have, well, really four ways. You have include, include once, require, and require once, right? So I'm actually going to say require underscore once, all right? So one, the difference between include and require is that include will try to reference a file. If it can't find the file, it will produce an error, but your page will render nonetheless. The require, however, will say, if I can't find the file, nothing will ever get rendered afterwards, all right? So the, the difference between the, the variations and the once now is that once we say once, if there is another reference to it, it won't, it will ignore it, it will skip over it. So we can just say require once since we only ever need to require the header, the content of the header PHP once. So require once, and then we we open uh, quotation marks, and then we reference the folder, which would be includes slash, and then the file we want is header, dot php and then in the same way and i'm just going to fix my indentation there i'm going to just copy that line and reproduce it below and i'm going to call this one footer dot php so having done that we're going to go back and refresh our page and we'll see that order is restored to the world where our text now looks as sleek as it did when we were referencing bootstrap and if I refresh the source code, then I see that my code looks just like how that template looks apart from a little spacing, which is inconsequential really, all right? And that is how we go about setting up a template. So there's one more thing I would want to do in the default, in the default template, it, gave us the title, Hello World. So if you're familiar with HTML, once again, the title is what gives the tab or the window the name. So Hello World is the name there. I don't want it to say Hello World. I'm going to change this to School Management. That's the name of our app, School Management, all right? And then by extension, you usually want to indicate which page you're on for school management. So like if you go on any other popular website, like say Amazon, you will see Amazon and then dash products or Amazon dash whatever page you're on right now. So I'm going to try and make that dynamic. And what I need to do is one, I'm going to set up a variable called title. So in the same PHP block inside my index.php file, I'm going to just go down the line so you can have as many lines within these tags as you need right as long as you're writing php code inside of the tags then you have no problem so a variable in php starts with a dollar sign and then you give it a name and then you give it a value all right so this is what you call a variable which is just like a temporary storage space for some value that you may want to reuse so in this case i'm setting up a variable called title and then i'm going to give it the value home all right so this is the index page is the first page that we'll ever land on so it's the home page right and then in php once again when you have code you need semicolons 
afterwards. So you can probably get a, away with one line of code with no semicolon, but it's always good practice to end your code with semicolons, all right? So title is equal to home and we're requiring the header. Now, the reason I did that before I did the require is that in the header file, I am going to reference this variable. If this variable is being referenced and it doesn't exist, then it will throw an error. So I have to one, declare it so that it exists. And then two, having, well, declared it and giving it a value, I can now include this file and then the resulting code, which needs to reference the variable has no problem. So the cool thing about PHP is that in the middle of HTML, I can just inject some PHP code. So right here, I'm just going to say dash, and then I'm going to open up a PHP tag. All right, so it fits right in. Yes, it may stick out like that's not how HTML tags look, but you see that there is no error. Visual Studio code is perfectly comfortable with what I'm about to do. And then what I'm going to do is print whatever value is inside title. So when we print using PHP, it prints to the HTML. So the browser really doesn't know the difference between the static text and whatever is being printed by PHP as at the time of rendering. So I'm going to say PHP and then to print, we can use the word print, yes, or echo. Echo is the more popular way you see it done. So I'm going to use echo and then I'm going to echo the variable title and i use the hashtag i should have used the dollar sign and title all right and once again we put our semicolon so let me go through that again i'm creating a variable called title and giving it a name a value sorry and then i'm going to require my header file my header file once it is loaded into the web page it is going to print the title school management and a hyphen all of this is static text that we typed and it will never change but then it's going to print whatever value is available in the word title in the variable title so if i changed this value from home then it will not print home it will print whatever that value is as at the time of rendering so let's try this so after doing all of that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to refresh this page. So notice it says, hello world. That's what we left it at. I'm going to refresh. And now you see it says school management dash home. Just to drive home the point, if I change that value to index and then I refresh, then when it loads up, it's going to say, oh, my the value in title is now the word index. All right. So that's how you can kind of dynamically control whatever content is printed to your screen or displayed to your screen using PHP. So now that we've done that for the index PHP, index.php, that's our, our landing page. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and put it in each of the index pages that we have already created. So this one is for the admin. So I'm going to say, instead of just home, I'm going to say admin home, right? And then for the lecturers, I'm going to paste it and I'm going to say lecturers home. So it's always good to kind of indicate where you are on the website. And this is a good way to do that rather dynamically, right? So if you are building a static site, obviously you would have to be writing over this code every time and PHP makes it easy for us to just reference it instead of writing it all the time. One more thing I'm going to do is enable word wrap inside of Visual Studio Code because as you can see, my code is kind of, uh, well, it's, it's spilling over. I have to scroll. I don't like to have to scroll and this is a small screen. So I'm going to try and increase the real estate and you can use control plus and minus to try and increase or decrease your interface. But then I'm going to turn on word wrap. So I'm going to go to view toggle word wrap and there you'll see word wrapping is enabled so my code is not going all the way out anymore and i can do it for that you shouldn't have to do it more than once if you do it with no tabs open i'm sure it will be done more globally all right so that's it for us setting up the files and folder structure as we go along we'll build on this and we'll start doing some exciting stuff